My name is Nick. I started Nick's TV repair about a decade ago, and since then we have fixed over 26,000 devices. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to fix this sharp power supply, which is experiencing a dead no power fault. The part number of this board is RUNTKA985WJQZ, and the model of the TV is LC-90LE745U. All right, let's begin our diagnostics. The first thing I want to do is go to continuity mode, so I will get a beep when we find a short, and I want to check my fuse over here. And it looks like we do have continuity, so the fuse is good, which means most likely my transistors over here are not shorted, and we're not getting a short, and no short. Now something I want to point out is we have a diode here with part number D7112, and you'll notice it has a little bit of corrosion. We just zoomed in so I can show you more clearly the corrosion that we're talking about. When we do a check on it, we're gonna notice we have continuity. And if I look at my meter, I'm getting about 19, 18 ohms of resistance. That's actually okay. Uh, we, we do not need to replace this diode. When it is in circuit, that is the reading we are expecting. Now, if we do take a look just below it, we have IC7102, and I'm gonna be going back to my normal resistance mode. We're gonna wanna do a ohms measurement. I'm gonna put one lead on pin one, and my other lead on any of the four pins at the bottom, and ideally, I'm gonna get a measurement that says something in the mega ohms. I'm getting 4.7, and again, all the bottom legs here are all shorted to one another, which is normal, which means you can put your bottom lead on any of the four legs on the bottom, you'll still get that 4.7. Seven. Or your IC could have failed slightly differently and you can be reading 200 ohms or somewhere around there. As long as it is not in the mega ohms, that means that this IC chip is defective and needs to be replaced. Now when that IC fails, it doesn't always cause a no power fault. Typically the TV actually is still able to turn on, but it will quickly shut off after 30 seconds or so. The reason I mention this is there's probably another component that is defective that we need to identify. We're gonna slide the board over slightly and we're gonna take a closer look at R7133. Now this is a 2.2 ohm resistor, and let's see if that's the case. It's looking like I'm getting about 2.4 mega ohms, which is much too high, so that tells me that that resistor is blown and needs to be replaced. Now that resistor is in charge of carrying the standby voltage to our output connector to the main board, and if that resistor is blown, it cannot provide that standby voltage, which would be the reason why we're not getting any standby and the TV appears to be completely dead. So let's go ahead and replace the resistor and that IC chip together and see what we get. Now, something I did not mention yet is the customer actually did try to replace those components and they did not have a successful repair because they also tried to replace that diode. So when we go to the backside and take a look at this board, we will notice that there has been some tampering done. So our IC chip has the bottom four legs here and the top three over here. We're gonna start by desoldering the top legs. And as you can see, the bottom four are all on the same pad, which is why when we took our measurement, it didn't matter exactly which leg we were taking the measurement from since they're all on the same pad. All right, we have a very large blob of solder here. We're gonna finish off the desoldering with the wick. And I think my IC just fell through. Yeah, there it is. So I'll go ahead and feed in my replacement. To hold the pin in place, I'm gonna slightly bend some of the pins out. There we go. Now we can solder it in. And let's go ahead and redo our measurements. So this is our pin one. It's obviously reversed since we are on the back side of the board. And again, any of the bottom pins will do. Instead of the 4.7 kilo ohms, we are now getting six mega ohms and rising. So to me, that means that we've resolved that issue. I'm gonna give the area a quick clean since there is a little bit of flux residue. All right, now let's go ahead and take a closer look at our resistor. We'll flip the board over again. Let's zoom in on that resistor, and you will notice it has been tampered with, which is okay. It looks like the customer did do a good job. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of solder here. Some of the solder that was used does not flow very well, or at least it's not flowing as well as my 
let it solder. So I'm just adding a little bit of our own stuff. Okay, let's see. Is this loose? Not exactly. So this pin is loose on this side, but this pin is not loose. I still have, it's still attached a little bit. But let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll try to desolder the rest with the desolder wick. And did we get it? We did. All right, looks like one side actually already fell off. There we are. So as you can see, it is red, red, gold, gold, and that's supposed to be 2.2 ohms, and it is completely open. I'm not getting any resistance whatsoever. And this is our replacement, also red, red, gold, gold. And 2.2 ohms is what we're looking for. We're getting about 2.4 ohms, and that's just because my leads are probably a little dirty, and this is not the most accurate meter in the world. So that's definitely within spec, however. So we're good to install that resistor. So I'm just gonna bend the pins and we'll feed it through. Now, of course, the resistor does not have a polarity, so it does not matter the orientation. We'll solder it down. Cut off the excess from the leads. Quick little clean. All right, and we'll do our final check in circuit, of course. What do we have? And now we have a much better reading. At this point, I think it is safe for us to go ahead and live test it. Now I have a jumper that I've made here. It is going to be shorting out the standby line to the PS on line, as well as the panel on. So I'm gonna plug that into our connection. And this should allow the power supply to fully boot up when I apply power. All right, and here we go. I just heard the power supply click. Our multimeter is now in DC mode. Let's go ahead and do a voltage check. The first check I wanna do is on these filter capacitors. And we are getting 398 volts DC, 397, 398. So it seems fairly steady. It's going up and down one volt, give or take, but that's probably just because it's near the uh, 397.9 or something like that. But that tells me that the power supply is active. Let's go ahead and measure our output voltages. The pin one, according to the chart, is 12 volts. And that is what we're getting. Let's see, we have pin five and seven is the 13 volts. So that'll be this one right here. And we are getting our 13 volts. Next, I wanna check pin 15, which is our five volt line. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five from the top. So one, two, three, four, five from the top. And sure enough, we get our five volts. And finally, let's check the LED output. Now you wanna be very careful because here we're dealing with high voltages. So this is 294 volts DC, so that's good. And that does conclude our successful repair of this power supply. It does seem to me that the customer actually would have correctly fixed their power supply had they not tried to replace this diode over here. So that's why I mentioned it, don't replace this diode. Most often, if you have a no power fault, it's going to be because of the resistor, and most likely that resistor went out because this IC chip over here is gone defective and needs to be replaced. If you have a short power supply you would like to send in for us to fix, we do offer flat rate services, which of course come with our one-year warranty. Those are available on our website, which I will link in the description down below. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.